We have an accountability problem in society, don't we? That's what a lot of shit is about. It's about accountability. If you put a mirror up to humanity, we won't look in it. Unless it's a big fun house mirror, you know, the ones that make your chest look big but your feet look real small, that's hilarious. We're gonna look in that shit all day. That's really what a lot of these movements are about, right? That's what the Black Lives Matter movement is about. A lot of people get nervous and they get angry when I bring this shit up. They look at me and they go, it's fucking black supremacy, man. All lives matter, motherfuckers. Just, I need like a minute for rational thought. Can I get a minute for rational thought? Basically, what the Black Lives Matter people are saying is, hey, uh, we think it would be super cool if a percentage of the police population would just stop killing people. But that seems to be like a real big deal for a lot of us. Uh, so what we think is when you commit the murder, you should go to prison for committing said murder. But that's also like a really big deal for a lot of us. So what we're gonna propose is we take all the violent police officers and we put them on that Jurassic Park Island <laughs> and we can see how police brutality works on a T-Rex. <laughs> Which is gonna make hands up, don't shoot, look real adorable, isn't it? Just, yeah. It's changing the game on protesting. <laughs> Climate change is another one, yeah. This one boils my blood, right? I get very angry about this. There's a whole political party that doesn't believe that climate change is caused by human activity and about 12 scientists. Yeah, 12 scientists don't believe that climate change is caused by human activity. That's a very interesting thought, isn't it? And it rattled around in my head a little bit and I think it figured out why. Right? You know how when you grow up in a super religious household, by the time you turn 15, you're like, well, I'm an atheist now, fuck all that shit. Yeah, I think these 12 scientists were brought up in a house of so much rational thought <laughs> that when they turned 15, they were like, fuck Newton. How many laws does he want me to learn? Mm -mm, that's too many. I'm going to church. They come up with a litany of excuses, man. Meanwhile, the western half of this country is just a ball of fire. The southern half keeps drowning. Roads in India are melting, and there's still a goddamn polar bear in the North Pole waiting for a Coca-Cola. <laughs> the only excuse they've come up with is, well, God's mad that the queers got married. What the fuck? <laughs> we, do like, we do like to make big deals out of the, out of the polar bears, don't we? But there's no grizzly up in Connecticut going, what's all the deal about these polar bears? All bears matter. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, mentally ill people, I think we need to hold them accountable too. This is another one of our fear-based behaviors. We put them on a separate set of rules because we don't understand that. Oh, so we put them on a separate set of rules and take them out of society. That's what we do. We put them, uh, that's why we have things like nut houses and psych wards and all that kind of shit. We put them outside of society and on a separate set of rules and I don't think that's working. I think we need to start integrating them into society and letting them know that just because you have a mental illness doesn't mean you can call somebody a cunt and get away with it. <laughs> right? Just apologize and move on with your day. <laughs> But because we put them on a separate set of rules, I've seen some mentally ill people use their mental illnesses as an excuse for their behavior. I've done it. I've definitely used my anxiety as an excuse for my behavior. Almost like it's a demon possession. And if that's the case, we gotta try some regressive therapy. Dust off that old VHS copy of The Exorcist and get some holy water. Here we go. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. So one person in the room is like, hey, just a quick interjection. Um, I know that they said that your mother sucks cocks in hell, but um, I don't know if what you're doing is working because now they're just like wet and frustrated. <laughs> Maybe we can ask them about their feelings and see what's happening with that. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but most of the people in this room are more terrified of what you're doing. 
Also, let me throw this little piece of nugget out there. Uh, Jesus, probably not a licensed therapist. <laughs> God damn it, Carl. <laughs> Nobody knows what happened to Jesus in those missing 18 years, all right? He could have gone to, to college, and yeah, he gotten himself a psychiatry degree, and he would have gone to college for free because he's on that God scholarship. <laughs> right? Folks, Jeffrey Dahmer took accountability for eating people. <laughs> Yeah, there was no court deposition where he was like, well, McDonald's sucks. <laughs> Maybe if the McRib tasted better, I wouldn't have had to eat Lenny's ribs. <laughs> if a serial killer can take accountability for his actions, I think society can start taking accountability for some of ours. Just because we turned a blind eye to it, it doesn't get rid of problems with climate change, police brutality, racism, sexism. Those don't go away unless we start addressing them and try to figure out what the solution for it is. That's why it's important to look into every single mirror. The ones that make you look regular, the ones that make you look tall, short, give you a big chest. Because if we can look at it, maybe there's a solution. Maybe we can look at it and go, what's this? What's on my face? What's happening? Is this a boil? Pimple? What is it? Oh, oh, it's a raisinette. It's a raisinette, everybody. <laughs> but society is far too addicted to its own ignorance. And there ain't no solutions in ignorance. Just 25% crazy. Yeah. <laughs>